Hi, I'm Michael Sahota. And I'm Audrey Tara. In this episode, you'll learn about what it means to live and work from an evolved consciousness, why that's relevant for your job success, and very practically the shift you need to get started with it today. Yeah, and it's a fun introduction to who we are, what we do, what we're passionate about. And we're live from Agile 2022, so it's just been a, it's been a great experience here. So, so whether you're just making the planet a better place, your workplace a better place, or just you, you a better place, better place. <laughs> yeah. this is the show for you. Join us. So, hey, um, I'm Steve Mover. We're here at the Agile World at Agile 2022, and it's so wonderful to be back out and, and meet amazing people. And a couple of days ago, I met two shockingly amazing people, and I think I was supposed to meet you guys, and it was just a very random meeting, so I'm grateful for that. This is Michael Sahato. Sahota. Sahota. I got it wrong. I bet I feel it. And Audrey Tom. Yes. Okay, good. I got Well, that. at least you got mine right. Yeah, there we go. Well, <laughs> 50%. I got his first name right. So so there is that. And today we're going to talk a little bit about, about your journey because you guys have helping so many people change from within. And we know that we can't help others change. and others, We can't help others on a journey if we don't improve ourselves. And when we become better, then we can help others around us. So that is absolutely beautiful. So how did you guys get connected and started in this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that's a, that's uh, a long story. I'll, I'll tell you a few few vignettes of my life. So I originally was set up to be an engineer, an academic, you know, not good at talking to people, you know, humans, and more like the kind of person you lock in the back room and slide a pizza through the door. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I found myself working in technical roles and working as an Agile coach and helping teams use this stuff called Agile. And um, somewhere on that journey, I started understanding that to be successful in my role, I needed to grow, I needed to learn new things and so on. And I read this line in Brene Brown's book, and uh, it was really profound. She was quoting somebody else. The quote was, you can only be kind to others to the extent that you're kind to yourself. And at that time, I had this out of control, raging inner critic, that little voice that goes, rrr, 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 and we were, we, where I was judging myself. And I started this two year epic quest for self kindness. Um, and uh, then that really just kick started my journey. That was one moment. Um, and then the next moment was when I was failing as an agile coach because I realized, well, the only way to actually rate success is to shift the culture. And the only way to do that is to help the leaders evolve. And I thought, well, can I help these leaders evolve? And the answer I got back was, well, no, Michael, you're a well-intentioned asshole. <laughs> and so then I had a choice. Well, either I could fail in creating these you know, success and high-performance workplaces, places where people want to come to work, or I create this crazy hypothesis that if I evolved myself, that I'd be able to help others in the journey. That was my hypothesis. Like, no one told me this, that, oh, you just do this and then everything will work out. It's just a hypothesis of random experiment. So I started learning, not just learning like crazy knowledge, but how do I shift the core of myself to be a better human being? And that's what took me to India. That's where I eventually met, met Audrey. And um, it's been a profound learning journey since then. I uh, studied with spiritual teachers around the world because that's kind of the best, best place to go for learning how to create, a, create an inner shift. And really our work's just been about... It's just an epiphenomenon of what I needed to learn for myself to be successful. And it's, it's not just this inner shift of, of, of what they call it, consciousness or becoming a better human being. It's also about learning the practical external things that go with it. So it's like the being and the doing. And, uh, you know, Audrey recently coined it as what we do is helping people live and work in evolved states of consciousness, how to actually evolve and how to function there, continue growing from that place. Wow, that, that's that that's a lot in there. So so when you met, you met you met an engineer 
Yes. Who was a well-meaning asshole. Oh yeah, no, totally he was. Like I actually, I actually got to experience Michael Sutherland before I actually met him in person. And I was always like, oh, he's really good looking. And he's in, in, in the funny thing was that we would go on these Zoom calls once a month and he would be like, I, somebody please help me. I need a coach. I need somebody that knows how to be a coach, that's a professional coach, but also who understands energy and works within the, the, the personal growth and transformation place that we were in in India, like knows the same terminology. And every time he said that, I was like, oh, I can help him. I'm the one. I know that I... But then he would like do these little <laughs> weird things on the on the calls that were always just like, oh, this guy's not. This guy's not ready. This guy's not ready. And then when we ended up meeting in person, which I think this is the the thing, we judge people based on their behaviors and how they're showing up. But the truth is that behind all of that, there's something else that's really beautiful within each person. And so when I met Michael in person and we had mutual friends, so we were kind of hanging out together and it was a very intense course that we were in, in, in dropping us really deep into the subconscious and looking at our behaviors. And one day at lunch, he said, can you help me? And I, I said, of course I can. And I just put my hand on his heart and like, I just like kind of, I went like this and I just connected in with him. And I was like, oh my God, there's this beautiful soul in there that's just covered in all this. Like to me, it felt like almost like metally weird things, you know? And, um, and, and that was it. That was it. And, and, um, and then I, there was a moment during that, that nine days that I had the same kind of issue. I was working with a really intense, like one of my core issues, a block that I had that was blocking my success. And he said, I can help you as long as you're willing to go all the way through to the other side. And I said, yes. And he, he, because I said, yes, I was willing to show up and just, and do the work that I needed to do. And he, while he was working with me, it's funny because I, I have a lot of mastery over this kind of work. And, and so while I was just deep in my process, it was really intense. He would then do one thing or say one thing and I'd be like, oh, I would say the same thing if this was my client, you know? And then I would go back into my... So so by the time we were finished, I, I realized I never met anybody that we work exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and, 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 you know, my my whole journey has been, I'm a, I'm a professionally trained as an energetic healer to work on a medical team. So I've had eight years of formal training plus, plus, plus since the 90s. So, um, you know, when I was working, I work with very, very ill people. And while I'm, I'm helping them to, to get better, there's, there's all kinds of things that need to happen. Healing happens on a physical level, but it's very emotional. It's about your thoughts and your belief systems and lifestyle change. And so what I, in, in the course of at like 12 to 15 years into my career, I really thought, wow, if we can just change all of humanity at the same time, what would be the fastest way? And the fastest way for me was thinking everybody works. Everybody has a job. They're affected by, you know, what happens within these organizations. The products and services are affected by what happens inside these organizations. And the people go home. And if they're unhappy in the workplace and they're not being treated well and there's all these processes and structures that are creating oppression, then it's going to ripple out through all of humanity. So that's what I was seeing. And I was like, how can I, how can I come to you know, bring what I do into the workspace? And then when I met Michael and he did this agile thing, you know, I, was, I really, really saw agile as as the thing that's spread all over the globe that has this like a template already in place to really shift the mindset and consciousness of humanity which means we change our behaviors we change how we show up as human beings and we're doing it in the workplace 
And what this does is if, if, if you know, these organizations have 10,000, 100,000 people, you know, when we go to that scale and we change how we're behaving, how we're interacting with everyone, it ripples out to everybody's family. But not only that, if you think about the products and services that these organizations create, if they're being created in an organization that is oppressive and people hate their jobs and they're mean to everybody else, there's all kinds of competition and backstabbing and all these kind of negative ways of being, those products and services are going to represent that consciousness, that, that, that energetic component. And so, you know, organizations don't necessarily look at the impact that they really have on society and on humanity. And, and there's a, I feel like there's a greater responsibility that organizations can take if they start to look in this kind of weird thing of looking at consciousness, looking at energy, looking at, you know, how and why they're impacting and what's going on in the organization because it has much bigger impact than, than we can possibly know. So we say, well, we don't really care whether people make things better because they want to be more successful because they have engaged, happy workers and they're going to be more productive. Uh, they're right. We don't on care mon- if it's money. It could be money, it could be success, or it could be because they, they want to make the world a better place or they inherently see the value and dignity of human beings and just want to be responsible and create a good workplace. So it doesn't matter what motivates people as long as they're ready to do what's needed so they can show up in a way that will foster these... Uh, positive outcomes. Right, we say treat people well and they'll perform better. You know, it's just a, such a simple concept, but from the time we're born till the time we become adults, we're inundated in some sort of oppressed way of being. You know, it's like I look at my kids and, you know, my son wanted to run around the classroom and look at everything, yet he was paying attention to what the, the teacher was saying. But the teacher was like, he's he needs to sit on the carpet and sit still. Like well, what, what six-year-old kid can sit still, <laughs> right? You know, and then I just looked and I said, well, you know, Nate, what are the, you know, how many moons of Jupiter or whatever it was? And he was able to name them off, you know, and I said, well, it looks like okay. he's paying attention, <laughs> right? It looks like he's paying attention, even though it's not what the structure that you think it needs to be for kids to learn so I think it's I think it, this is a bigger global kind of you know discussion and in and, and concepts to really understand and I think that agile going back to agile agile is doing that it's it's really taking a different way of working um, in, in order to work in these these new ways like collaboration and discussion and decision making and all these different ways of working the only way that it's going to work for agile is is that if people shift into what we call higher states of consciousness but it it really just means that your worldview your perceptions and your behaviors are inclusive they're collaborative they're um they're showing up as your best self all the time no matter what's happening and even if there's a crisis or you know the tensions are running high that you're not interacting with people in a negative way that you're helping others become you know seeing and feeling and, and experiencing their own brilliance and, and and from that place like could you imagine if everybody had that like we all work together like this on the planet. I think it'd be wonderful. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let me ask you, Michael, you started off as an engineer, software developer, right? So why can't we just tell people to just spend more time hands on keyboards? <laughs> why is this why is this important to get people to to become their best self? So Well I think there's a lot know, of things. Yeah, there, yeah. There, there's a lot. So we can go to psychological safety. Yeah. We can go so to one anyone impact. who's worked with any kind of knowledge <laughs> worker, just pretty much almost every human being on the planet, um, <laughs> will realize that power is useless. Right. In terms of achieving the actual outcome, we can gain compliance. It's very easy with hierarchy and authority to create compliance, and on the surface, success, but that's not going to create the outcome we hope for. And every organization we've checked it out that is talking about Agile wants high performance. 
go faster, cheaper, better, engage workers, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, when we actually stop to say, well, what does it actually take to create that outcome? Invariably, when we start to dig below the surface, we talk about all sorts of surface level things, but when we start to dig below the surface, it's, well, um, at the core of it, we need people who are showing up engaged and passionate and learning and flexible and saying that I need help with this. And, you know, and so that means the whole, the whole system, the whole system, the whole culture needs to be completely different. And the big trap that people have fallen into is, well, let's just change the structures. Let's make a teal organization. Well, it's actually really simple. We'll change the process. Well, well the thing is, we'll, we'll change the process. We'll, we'll go to a flat, flat organization, right? That's the, the, the teal version. You know, get rid of the hierarchy. Well, it's not the hierarchy that's the problem. It's the mindset. It's the control mindset. It's this command and control habit that's baked into your being and Audrey's being and my being because we're all grew up in a world of command and control. Our parents told us what to do from a very young age. And so that's what, that's the, that's what we're talking about, a shift of consciousness. We need to shift out of all this conditioned behavior from our society, from our schooling systems, from our... It's not our parents' fault. It's a non-personal, multi-generational problem. So we're talking about a, a, like a really a global shift of consciousness from a certain way of functioning on planet Earth to a more evolved way of functioning. That's what, where the performance is going to come from. Now you can call that a shift of culture. And we look at culture and we say, well, how do we shift culture? Well, it's really simple. Culture is a reflection of the leaders. Their level of consciousness creates that level of consciousness of culture. So... If you actually, anybody, and most people have these value pro, values programs and all sorts of nonsense that goes on in the name of culture. <laughs> it's just it's just horrific. I mean, I really feel like we're in the, the dark ages when I see a lot of, I mean, there's some really nice bright spots, but 90, 95% of what I see happening in the name of culture is well-intentioned and actually blocking real progress. So ultimately, all that's really relevant, and this, this is our work, is, is those who are ready, and it could be at anybody at any level, and anyone who has authority is a leader, and can create a local, local, localized culture. Culture is actually a local phenomenon. So anybody who wants to make a difference, who wants to show up as a better leader, help them show up as a better leader. Help them evolve their mindset, their consciousness, and learn the practical patterns of interaction that allow them to keep on growing on a daily basis. And that's really the secret. It's not like, oh, you know, I mean, we have all the people who go to like, oh, I go to a Vipassana retreat and I'm all peaced out and I come back to deal with my family and the work situation and then all that goes, goes out the window because we actually need not just a shift but a way to integrate into daily life. And that's what's very unique about our work. It doesn't really fit in, it doesn't fit in any category. Like, it's not just leadership development. It's not just mm -hmm. about culture. It's not just how to approach change. This is integrated way of living and working from an evolved consciousness and, and how to evolve. Wow. You covered a lot of ground there. I love the fact that you brought up knowledge workers because, because why hire knowledge workers if you're just going to tell them what to do? Right? So you're just gonna be well, then you turn them into them theory them. experts, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a whole thing. Yeah, that's, 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 that's what modern management is all about. Is how do we take intelligent, educated, mm -hmm. motivated people and disengage and demotivate them? I mean, really, it's, it's a beautiful apparatus <laughs> and structure for that. We'll have management by objective. We'll have layers of hierarchy. We have yes. people who are in management yeah. roles that don't know how to use their power responsibly. And we just have this whole infrastructure to demotivate people. And we wonder why we have disengagement. And then it's like, oh, now we just solve the engagement problem. Well, the engagement problem is really simple. It's the leaders are disengaging people. Just stop demotivating people, and people will naturally be engaged, <laughs> you know, and, and help those managers learn how to allow those people to thrive and be, do their best work. Everybody just wants to be successful. Everybody just wants to show up, do a good job, and be recognized for it. It's not that complicated. It, it, Except it, we're conditioned. It, it isn't complicated, but it is, it's in our heart and soul. We've been brought up. It's right. ingrained. Yeah. We, should, we need to be the no, biggest it's ape. It's not in our heart and soul. Well, okay, not in our heart. Because yeah. that's different. It's... There's all this stuff that's covered, just covered over us. So when we peel all that away, it's in our conditioning. It's, it's right there. And yeah. adaptations that we needed to survive on this this planet. Yeah. All right now, what the two of you have done together is take this beautiful idea from an engineer and an energy healer, and you guys have created a way to do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, you failed yeah. many times, and you've been successful many times. Mm -hmm. You, you do. How in the heck do we do this? We want to stop talking about it. how do we do it. If I'm, yes. if I'm a leader, what do I do? Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so that itself is the problem. 
I'm going to repeat your question back to you. I'm the leader. What do I do? Yeah. So the ch so there's there's a default assumption in that I am fine. Just tell, give me the information and tell me what three things I need to do. Or five things. Or five, like things. five things. Yeah, give me the three things I need to focus on, <laughs> and I'll do those three things. But I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. Well, well, that the truth is we're not fine. The truth is that thought I am fine is the ego lying to us. It's called uh, illusionary superiority or cognitive bias. What it actually takes to evolve is start to admit, look in the mirror and admit, I'm a human being. I'm not perfect. Acceptance. And start to become aware and accept the truth of how we're showing up and say, I don't want to keep on showing up like this. I don't want to keep on demotivating people. I see what damage I'm causing. I know what engagement scores I just got. It's not glowing. And I want to create a different self. And out of that desire, and this is what we call evolutionary leadership, it's this choice to evolve. Not to give me the three things. Like, Agile's got part of it right. Retrospectives, we're ready to learn knowledge, skills, how do we collaborate better together. That's fine. That's what we call a learning mindset. We're talking about an evolutionary mindset. So the one thing to focus on, not to do, but to focus on is choosing to step into an evolutionary mindset, choosing to say, I'm ready to evolve as a human being. Now, when I say human being, I'm talking about all aspects of the person. That's why we say it's about living and working from an evolved consciousness. What people who connect with this work happen to them, the biggest value is not what they get in the workplace, the promotions and so on. The biggest value is the shifts in the relationships with their family which are the most meaningful and impactful in their lives. Because right, they actually turn into a different, a different person. A different parent, where they're no longer oppressing their children the way they used to, and that their relationships flourish. And, and it's just like, and just hearing people's stories of how it's been so transformational. It's, it's just, anyway, so, so that's the, I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah. Well, um, you, you started to answer, answer, yeah. answer the question, but when, when I asked the question, so I'm, I'm a leader, what do I do? Yeah, so, so the first thing is, take a look at the mirror. Yeah, so right. it's it's every moment. If you lived every moment saying, how did I create this? Well, how do I create me? How do I? But how do I, how do I create, how did I create this situation? How did I create this experience? Just from that place, then you're going to start to look at things differently because now you're taking responsibility. And, and, and it's really hard to do. Oh, I didn't create this. Yeah, let me, let me be very concrete. I'll give you a very concrete example. So every time there's a problem in your organization, every time there's a problem in your organization, mm -hmm. the team doesn't hit the delivery day. Right. So and so is not showing up for work. So and so is not showing up for their best. Right. When we when we step into this look in the mirror, and we're talking in a very deep way beyond most of what people don't normally comprehend, we're saying, well, how am I contributing to the situation? Either through an action that contributed to the situation being the way it is, or through inaction. So we start to move to a place of what we call total responsibility. Yeah, so instead of saying, okay, well, I mean, like a, 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 a learning oriented leader, very nice. We'll start to say, well, let's have a retrospective, let's talk about what's going on, mm -hmm. share ideas, da, da, da. that's nice. But what we're talking about here is leaders who already say, well, how am I personally contributing to that? Like, how am what I environment the one did What I have I create? done to demotivate this person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love, I love, I love that. Yeah. Because when you talk, or you hear, I've heard leaders, and when they speak, you feel differently. They talk for 10 minutes, and you feel differently. Yes. You're not motivated about making money. You're, you're motivated about joining them on whatever cause they're... Well, they're that can go either way. Yes. If, if they're, if they're yes. holding an evolved consciousness and they speak, they're going to invite. Mm -hmm. And their, their energy field is open and expansive, and so they're going to act as this open invitation to uplift all the people around them. They're but, then, but then you get the other leader... Who's the other? Their their energy field is contracted and sharp and jagged yeah. and pointy. And when you're around them, it's like you just want to duck and run for cover and hope the meeting ends as soon as possible. Oh yeah, right. So so all of us. <laughs> see, but the point is, that's the point. all of us are doing this as team members, as leaders, as family members. All the time, we're either uplifting everyone around us, or we're actually causing damage. And what we're looking in the mirror, the level of depth we're talking about is to start realizing there's a lot more damage there than we've been aware of our whole life. Because our ego plays this 
trick of lying to us and telling us everything's fine and we're fine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We, and we, when we, we start to believe we're damaged. Exactly. We're damaged or we're damaging everyone else because then, mm-hmm. like, then I start judging myself. <laughs> it's like that I no longer have the first problem, now I'm judging myself. And we, we just had this. We just had this. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two problems. <laughs> We just had this great conversation at lunch, and, and and we were talking about okay, so where is this all coming from? This behavior, and it's the egoic consciousness. And so when when I mean, we think at a, a very different level, so when we're talking about the egoic consciousness, if you think about it, everybody has the same consciousness. It's it's actually everybody has the same fears, the same worries, the same things that upset them, the same outbursts of emotions. It might be different for each situation, but we generally have this this one way of being that's that's very damaging and negative, you know, when we're in that space. And and so we were talking about like well what's going on? What's going on? Why is why is there behavior within all of us, each individual human, that creates separation? We create separation within ourselves when we when we tell ourselves we're unworthy. Like at the deep core level of our being, it's like there's there's things going on in our in our minds that are really impacting how we're showing up on a day to day, moment to moment way. And so when we start to look at this egoic consciousness that's that's driving and motivating everything that we do. We kind of we kind of look at it not in a negative way. We just we're just looking at it, saying, "Wow, there's a part of us that's creating separation. There's a part of me that is choosing to be separate from people, or separate from myself, to feel unworthy, or to have you know negative thoughts and belief systems." There's, there's me, you know, looking out at the world and judging everything that's going on around me. And I'm separating myself, you know. So when, so when, we, when we really can look at that and we can say, wait a minute, I don't want to choose that anymore. I don't want to show up this way. I don't want to show up unmotivated at work. I don't want to show up not liking my boss because of their behavior and what's going on in the workplace. And I can choose myself. I can say, okay, no matter what's going on, you know, we're all, all humans, we're all the same. You know, we might look different, but on the inside, internally, we're all the same. We all function the same. You know, and understanding from that place and then finding, you know, what we have, if we have a playbook, and the bottom part of the playbook is psychological safety, listening, being like emotionally clear, compassion and patience. Start living from that place. Where am I feeling psychologically safe? And where am I not feeling safe? Where am I taking away psychological safety from people? How am I not listening? I, I love the fact that you, you, you mentioned compassion in there, the psychological yeah. safety. Because we talk about psychological safety in many different ways. We talk a little bit about empathy. But it really does get down to just a little, little compassion. And patience. I want to be empathetic and, and understand you, but then I have to have compassion. Right. At, at yeah, level. empathy is very different. Yeah, compassion, compassion trumps empathy is the easiest way to understand. Right, and so we're talking about diversity and inclusion. When you're living from this place, there's no issues. There's no issues. Yeah, and I, I, I just want to tag on what Audrey was saying. So we all know those leaders, so hopefully we've been in our lives and experienced these leaders who are just these amazing human beings. Yes. So um, that's like if we look at it like 0.01% of the population or 0.01%, right? So if we want to be successful in organizations, we just need to go find those people. But, <laughs> but I know they're, they're in short supply. So what do, what do you do? What do I do? What do people who are watching this do? Well, it's to start going, well, I'm not that person. Yeah. Yeah, and I'd like to show up like that. What can I do? That's or at what, times I'm that way, and yeah. times and I'm how not. Do that I, way. How do I show up that way more of the time? Yeah. That's what. That's what, the, what, what we mean. Like that. That's what we mean by shifting our consciousness. That's what we mean by living and working from an evolved state of, of being, an evolved state of consciousness. It's a very simple idea. How do I? Sh- and, 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 and the whole thing is, but I was honest with myself. I was the well-intentioned asshole. Like this is what I'm trying to tell 
you tell everyone it's like the audience. everyone <laughs> it's possible it's possible the, the starting place is to admit it and then choose to grow like it's not complex you said what's the one thing it's to admit it and choose to put time energy investment in evolving as a human being because right. what we've gotten to is it's replicable like I've gone on my journey Audrey's gone on her journey and we train thousands of leader, leaders around the globe who've gone on their journey well, there's like a it's technology totally, issue of consciousness. It's totally there is something. replicable. Right? Whether you do it with yeah, us, yeah. whether you do it with somebody else, it doesn't matter. What matters is making the choice and on a daily basis putting in energy and eventually, like I did, my epic quest for self-kindness. I know I didn't do it, but I just had a choice that I wanted that for myself. So that's it. That's what we call an evolutionary leader. The person who makes the choice to evolve. I like the evolutionary concept of it. I'm well, a big fan of, the, of yeah. the, the, the fact that we can we can evolve our mindset, but we can't stay in any one mindset forever. We're going to fall back and forth, but eventually mm-hmm. we can evolve to the place to where that closed mindset doesn't spend as much time in me as it used to. Exactly. If it spends less time in me, I spend more time on the, on the open mindset, or on the, the learning mindset, or the agile mindset, and I'm, I'm, I'm evolving. I'm getting that. I'm always going to fall down, but that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I would I would just be very specific here. Agile mindset, open mindset does not mean evolution. Correct. Okay, evolution, that's what I'm saying. Like, like We've looked at all the things that we need to do. What's the the essence? So that's what I'm saying. Like A lot of people have it half right. Mm-hmm. Agile mindset, mindset, open mindset, they're pointing in the right direction. But I can be all have all the agile mindset I want, but it doesn't mean I'm going to evolve. So it's true. So I can have all the open mindset as I want. It doesn't mean I'm going to evolve. This is the piece, the one piece. And there's a choice. The one thing. The one thing. This but it's not a doing. Thing. It's a choice. It is a choice. So, wow. Okay, so it's we are at, we are at Agile 2022. It is starting to get a little noisy in here because people are going to come in. I would, the speaker has yeah. is getting set up when for, I, when I met for you, her awesome when I met you talk. guys, When I met you guys, I stood next to you for five minutes and I just knew that I needed to spend more time with you. And then you walk up and I knew I needed to spend, I could spend all afternoon with you guys. However, if the next, can, can we sum up the evolutionary mindset? Yeah. Yeah, the evolutionary mindset is the choice to evolve myself as a human being. An evolutionary leader is the person who makes that choice on a consistent and ongoing basis. And, and actually, and I want to leave asking that. the question, how did I do this? Let, let's actually close with this. Why don't we just give everyone the experience? Yeah. Give everyone the experience. Yes, so everyone is listening. Just, just close your eyes. Everyone? Okay. Yeah, all right. I'll do two. All right. Just close your eyes. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say some words. As they say these words, we're going to... We're going to share these words there with a quantum frequency of all consciousness attached. So don't think about the words. Just allow yourself to experience whatever you experience. So if you find yourself thinking, just allow yourself to notice what you're experiencing in your body, physical body, your energy body. So I'm going to say these words now. Perfectly say. Perfectly so, safe. Um, yeah. Just allow yourself to experience. Perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. Take a deep breath in. And out. Yeah. Sort of last year. While you're speaking, you can move your phone. Open your eyes. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. That's the shift. Can you imagine if we felt like that way or better all the time? And everybody felt that way or better all the time. How different they Oh my God, I feel that. I feel in, in like two minutes. Because you know, all the, all the stress of going on with it, with the convention yeah. and all. That's all it takes. That's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quantum, quantum technology for shifting consciousness is here on the planet now. And it's rapid and it's easy. Yes. It does not need to be hard. It's not 
It's not, doesn't it, take years. You know, there's it takes a saying. Seconds. There's not the saying. It's not your father's Cadillac. I think it's an ad like that in the U.S. Okay, right? Yeah, this is not. Good. This is not your. This is not the previous generation spiritual development. <laughs> Rapid, accelerated, and it's here now. That's we awesome. don't need to suffer. So, how can people find out more uh, about what you guys do? One, all of the information will be in the show notes. If you go to the YouTube channel or the website, Roger World News, it will all be there because I'm going to get your bios and everything else and yes. everything she has to do. But what what what, what can people do to, to, to get started? Here? They can go to shift shift three one four dot com or evolutionaryenergetics dot com evolutionaryenergetics.com because that has actual uh, uh, free downloads of uh, meditations for you to get started but chip314.com also has a lot of our training sites and our book and our books because you guys go through a you you guys run a a training program yes we uh, have the academy of leadership mastery and we have some uh, well well, the the, the thing is we weave this into our certified agile leadership training so for people in the agile space who want to get better at agile (laughs) right in there (laughs) but the advanced work is what we call Jedi school or the academy of leadership mastery which is actually a residential program so it's a Environment where, you know, where we create a safe environment. Like mm-hmm. when a crab, if they want, if a crab wants to grow, they have to, t- they have to let go of their old shell, be in a safe place, grow a new shell, mm-hmm. and then they can function in the world again. And so that's what we do: is we create a, a space of five days, mm-hmm. residential, so people don't go anywhere, yeah. so people can can let go, let go of all the conditioning, the armor, wow. yeah, and then and then from that place to find their. Throughout and emerge their more authentic, powerful, true self. We also have the book Emotional Science, which is oh. uh, how to really um, tap into your emotional system and understand how it's working, and then a really. But you've been lied to. Yeah. Pretty much everyone has been lied to about how their emotions work. We're pretty controversial. <laughs> <laughs> but then, we probably tell ourselves those lies because they're easy. Yeah. Well, we're actually trained. But I think I think the thing is is that our passion is the how to. Not so much the lecturing part and the education and knowledge, it's important, but the how to. How to show up differently, how to shift your consciousness, what does it take, and actually do it. Because that's our passion. And I love that because it's not just about what we know. People are telling me what to do all the time. Exactly. And and so if we do walk in, we're just going to tell them to do what they're supposed to. Why can't they do what I tell them? (laughs) So that never works. We have to make make the transformation through the evolution. That is wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much. I want to talk to you guys more. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for listening.